Okay, we're back with this week's new comic book haul. Number two for me. We'll see if we can make it a little better than the last one. We'll start out with something easy. The Walking Dead. Everybody knows that one. <laughs> this is part 12, the last part of All Out War, issue 126. And it is more than part 12. I mean, the, the, the build-up to this story was... A lot of issues, and then they gave us a 12 parts of the actual story, so it's been a long time coming. A lot of people can complain that this is a little too drawn out, but it's still okay. I like The Walking Dead, so I'm going to stick with it. I'll be interested to see how it ends. Here we go with Thief of Thieves number 20. I've enjoyed this series. It's the beginning of a new story arc. I'm not sure if this is a new writer or not. I can't remember. I think they've had two writers so far in this book. But the art has always been nice. And it's the story of a master thief who wants to retire, but of course the criminals of the world just won't let him. I think that's the story of every master thief. But it's done pretty well here, and I enjoy the book. And here is issue 21 of Mind Management by Matt Kint. Matt, Matt Kint, I think that's how you say his name. <laughs> it's, I think, I believe this is going to be the silent issue. I haven't read any of these books yet. I'm uh, making this just as I get back from the comic shop. Nice screaming face cover, good red hair everywhere. This is a cover I like, and this, this, this is one of my favorite books that's coming out right now. It's a story of uh, some crazy old government agency that used to hire these people with strange superpowers, and Matt Kint thinks up some really strange superpowers for them to work, work with. And the agency was abandoned ages ago, but now they're trying to bring it back. Some bad guys are, some good guys are. There's lots of espionage in this one, lots of mystery, lots of strange superpowers, and people running around having adventures. I say give it a read. Next on deck, we have The Massive by Brian Wood. And he's had various artists on this series. There's a new one for this, uh, this part one of three. I can't quite pronounce the guy's name, but oh well, you can look it up yourself. <laughs> this this is a series that for me started slow and didn't quite have any direction, but now it seems to. And I I enjoyed I really enjoyed the last story arc. Um, it's all about what happens in a post uh, post collapse world they call it, where the economy and environment is collapsed all around the world, and. These were some kind of eco-warriors who were out to save the environment and save the world, and they didn't. So what they're trying to figure out, what do you do next? Because it's a much more dangerous world out there, and they're trying to figure it out and make their way in it. There's another cover I find kind of disappointing this week. I mean, it's a water truck, as far as I can tell, with some... I, I, I just don't like it. Oh well, maybe next month will be a better cover. And now the Manhattan Project's number 20. I don't know why they do these all-graphics covers. I find them terrible and uninteresting, but they've had them all 20 issues and they keep going. I mean, I don't know why anyone would see this cover and go, that's a good idea. But anyway, the comic is good. It's one that's kind of hard to describe. It's just plain weird. Uh, its basic conceit is that the Manhattan Project that developed the first atom bomb was just a cover for a whole bunch of other wacky projects that the government was working on doing with super technology and space travel and alien life. And you've got lots of famous physicists in this book and... Soviet generals and American presidents who get turned into computers and it's just so weird. But I like weird. <laughs> so I say keep publishing Manhattan Projects and I'll keep buying it. Well, 
finally, a book that's a little easier to describe. This is Harbinger number 22, uh, the new Va uh, Valiant relaunch book. It's a story about a bunch of teens with superpowers going up against a uh, evil corporation. It's a little more nuanced than that, but that's the basic story. I've been following this one, reading it since the beginning. I generally enjoy it, but the $4 price tag is getting to me, I gotta say. A lot of these $4 comic books are like, holy cow, that's just too much. But it's being canceled, so I'll buy it to the end anyway. But I actually am glad to get rid of a $4 comic book off my pull list, because they've just been annoying me lately. But anyway, enough of that rant. This cover's not bad. It's okay. A little bit too much type on it for me. I mean, does Death of a Renegade Part 1 really have to nearly obliterate the angel with the skeleton angel? Whatever the heck that thing is. Well, maybe it's, it's not particularly an interesting drawing, so maybe it should <laughs> obliterate it a little. But anyway, Harbinger's not a bad book. If you can find some back issues of it, it's a decent read. Also this week, I got Lazarus number 8. Another cover I find boring, but oh well. They, they made their cover look like a boring propaganda poster, and they succeeded. <laughs> but anyway, I, I generally like this book. It's, um, once again, sort of some future dystopian world where very few people rule everybody else. And there's all sorts of royal intrigue going on. And Lazarus, the, uh, who the book is named after, is a woman who's got superpowers, I guess. All, all the different families who run the world have superpowered warriors who fight for their family. And she's one of them, and she's uncovering wrongdoings and stuff like that. And there's a lot of political intrigue and uh, spying and fighting going on in this one that I find it interesting. I'll keep getting it. And now it's time for Ghosted number 9. And I think I'll call this one the Scary Animals with Glowing Eyes cover. Once again, a cover that disappoints. Uh, I don't find it particularly interesting or well done, but oh well, I generally like the book. Ghosted kind of mixes genres of spies and guys who hunt the supernatural. It's a story of a guy who's, who gets hired to track down supernatural stuff, but there's a lot, once again, it's a book with a lot of politics and intrigue in it. I seem to be attracted to those ones. <laughs> Where um, he's got guys after him on any job he's doing who are trying to hunt him down, and he's hunting down ghosts for pay, and he hires a team of operatives and stuff like that. In general, it's a good book to pick up if you like that sort of thing, and I do. And here is a one-shot from Dark Horse collecting... You know what? I'm not even sure if it's all new or if it collects a bunch of previously printed Evan Dorkin... Dorkin... Eltingville Club. Oh my goodness, that's all hard to say. Either way, I generally like his work. So I saw this was coming out and I uh, pre-ordered it. I'm sure it's probably not one that uh, the comic shop orders a lot of copies of, so it'll take some doing tracking down. But I think he's a good cartoonist. You may remember him from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure that Marvel published in the 90s. But I, I like his own work. Um... Stor stories of people, and uh, you know what? I haven't read an Eltingville club story in a little while, so I don't remember if they're a general club or a comic book club, and I'm confusing them with uh, another book. But either way, I'm sure I'll like it. And the final book for the week is one that hasn't quite made my pull list yet, but I've picked up the first three issues of. It's called Undertow, and it's a weird, weird book. I mean, you can tell by that weird cover, which I like this weird cover. But it's the story of a 
bunch of people who, first of all, it takes place in the distant past. When human beings were basically animals running around, living in caves. But there's these high-tech people who live under the oceans. And they've decided they want to somehow colonize the land, but they haven't figured it out yet. And there's, once again, there are all sorts of intrigue going on between people who want to colonize the land and some rulers, royal family, politicians, I don't know who, who run the cities underwater. And these guys who want to colonize the land all live in a giant ship that... Uh, they're trying to find some place where they can live in peace. And it's, it's, it's just a very strange book. The art is strange. The writing's a little strange. The storytelling is strange. I'm, I like strange, but I'm not quite sure if I'm going to keep buying this one. We'll see how this issue goes. And lastly, here's a little look at my backdrop. It's an uncut card sheet of 1993 Marvel Masterpieces. I've had this sitting around since 1993 in a case doing nothing, and I finally found a use for it as a backdrop for these videos, so I figured I'd show it off a little. I'm not even sure who these characters are. X-Men 2099 characters? That's what the cards are. Cerebra? Crystalline? Who's that guy? Bloodhawk in Mean Streak? You got me. I don't know that I ever read X-Men 2099, but I've got an uncut card sheet of it. All right. Until next time, it's over and out.